Welcome back to our series for statistical handling or data handling for statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video number nine. And in this video, we're going to talk about matrices again. So I'm calling this matrices two, even though we didn't have one named matrices one in code along eight or video eight, we did talk about, start talking about matrices and matrix operations. Okay. So I'm going to clear my environment, increase the number of lines to 10,000, although in this course we really uh, don't use anything, or at least so far we haven't with uh, that many lines of code so, or results. Okay. So we're going to talk about some intermediate uh, matrix op operations here, but before we do that we're going to um, revisit some things and uh, introduce a new concept. Now, this concept of l the length of a vector um, is going to be confusing, maybe, because we because R really uh, talks about the length of a vector, and somebody uh, didn't think about the keyword they use for the function, the length, and what we normally mean by the length of a vector. Okay, so. If x is a four-dimensional vector, that means that it has four elements. So, so remember that this is really the transpose of this vector, that it's actually a column. Okay, so all vectors are columns. Okay, um, and so that's how or R stores it, but that's not always how it prints it out. So if I put x in there, and then I use this function, the length of x, it's not what we're talking about in this section. All it is is how many elements or dimensions um, are in this vector. So it's telling me that it's a four-dimensional vector. Okay? And that means that it represents a point in a uh, four-dimensional hyperplane. Okay? And I want to know, um, I want to calculate the actual the length of the vector, meaning the Euclidean length or the what we call the L2 length. Okay? And so this length, how we calculate it is we take each element of the vector and we square it. Okay? So we take 5.1 and square it, and then we add the square of the next element. So 2.8 squared and then 6.5 squared, and then 10.7 squared. We add all those up, and then we take a square root of the result. So here's some manual code to calculate this. So, um, and if, uh, if I print this out, oops, okay, so, Oh, I see. This is saying I, I don't have uh, an underscore here. I had missed. All right, so there we go. So uh, this was L minus X, and, and it didn't know what L was. So uh, I had mistyped it. You can see the, the minus sign here by uh, mistake. Okay, so printing this out, I get 13.80543. So that's 5.1 squared plus 2.8 squared plus 6.5 squared plus 10.7 squared. And then after we added that up, we took the square root of the entire thing. So I manually coded this. And so what I did was I started off with the uh, sum of x squared, right? So I didn't have to add each of the things. X is a vector, so I, when I square X like this, it squares each of the elements. That's what R does to this. Uh, and then I perform the sum on that, so that adds those values, those elements together. And we look, and that's 190.59. And then we take the square root of that to get the 13.80543. Now, um, there is a function called the norm, and this function is in the base package of R, which is nice. So you don't have to install any packages to use the norm. And when we look at the usage of this, then we see that X is our uh, matrix, and then type is one of these many types. And if you look at these, we've got uh, O, 0, or 1, uh, little o, uh, capital O, little o, or 1 specifies the 1 norm. This is the maximum absolute column sum. 
okay? And then I, or little i, specifies the infinity norm, and it's the maximum absolute rho sum. And then we've got F, or little f, specifies the Frobenius um, norm. Uh, this is the Euclidean norm of x treated as if it were a vector, okay? And then, um, then we've got M, which is the maximum modulus of all elements in X, and then we've got the two norm, which is, or the spectral or two norm, which is the largest singular value um, of X. The default is O, only the first character of type one is used. Okay, so, or type is used. I'm sorry, I don't, don't know why, uh, or, or the first element of type is used. So if you type in more than one of these, it's just going to use the first one. Okay, so I've used the two, but it looks like I want the Euclidean norm. It looks like I should have typed in F. So let's see what happens if I uh, change this to F. Uh, oh, it has to be a matrix. Okay, so because this is a, um, a vector, two is what we did need. Okay, and so um, L x dot 2, I print that out, and I get the same exact value, okay? So we're talking about vectors, not matrices, so if you want to use a, a matrix, um, we would have to uh, use the F there, okay? Oh, I already have the value just up here, okay? I'll move it down just to clean it up. Now, in this file, what you need to turn in, you don't have to include all of this if you don't want to, okay? So I do want you to include X, and you could write it as I originally had it, as a row if you want to. Um, that's how I usually put in vectors in a, in a row so it doesn't take up so much room. Um, and then this code and any of the output, like, like this value here. And oops, I'm just putting it over there so it doesn't uh, um, get confused with any other code. All right. So again, this length is called the Euclidean norm of a vector or the L2 norm. And um, okay. And so we're using this norm function. When it's a vector, we use type two. As you can see from over here, if it's a uh, matrix, you probably want to use type F if you want the Euclidean norm, okay, which will mean something different than it does for the vector, a little bit different, but it's still the Euclidean type of uh, um, distance, okay? So we can see that LX2 and LX.2 and LX are the same value, okay? So we don't have to manually code it, we can use this norm function, all right? Now, what happens when we multiply x by a constant? Let's say that the new vector is x2. So let x2 be three times x. And when I print this out, I get 15.3, uh, 8.4, etc. So what's happened here is that I've multiplied three by each of the elements. Each element has been multiplied by the constant. That's what happens when we multiply a constant times a vector, as we talked about last time. Now here is the answer. Um, when I do this, this is the answer that uh, R gives me. It prints it out as a row. But remember that it's really a column. So this can be confusing or misleading when, you're, uh, when you see that R prints it out as a row and it's really a column, and then you start thinking about multiplication, and you think this is, this is the transpose of this vector, okay? So R is tr printing out the transpose of the vector, so if you start thinking about multiplying this by another vector, um, you need to be careful and remember that in R, it's really saved as a column. The vectors are saved as columns, not rows, but then they print it out as a row. So that can be confusing until you get used to it, okay? So, and it does this to save space in the console, okay? So, as I said here, it's, it's printing out x2 prime, or if you wanted to write it as the function in uh, R, it would be t of x2, okay? 
So now what happens if we calculate the Euclidean norm of x2? Okay, so I'm going to call this one just x2. Up here I call this L of x dot 2, so the second one, and it's the same as L of x. Okay, now I want L of x, uh, the Euclidean norm of x2, so I'm going to call that L of x2. And so uh, I run this, and when I print this out, I get 41.4163. So L of x1 is, uh, or x2 is, um, oops, something's uh, slow with my computer. So what relationship is there between this? And it turns out it's three times, oops, wrong button, it's three times L of x. So C times L of x, or C times x is um, the, the norm becomes C times the norm, okay? So L of x2 here is simply three times L of x. And if I run this code, you see that I get the exact same value, okay? So that is the relationship. Now, last time we also talked about the inner product or the dot product, and um, we talked about uh, x prime x or x prime y, or we could talk about y prime x, um, is, and, and they're going to be the same. x prime y and y prime x are the same value. Okay, So x prime here is t of x. That's how we write the transpose. And then we see that we've got the matrix multiplication, um, so the percent around the multiplication sign. And this says that we're going to perform matrix multiplication, or vector multiplication in this case, where we're going to take, um, uh, if we have x, let's see if I can find x here. So x, I'm going to take 5.1 and multiply it by itself, and then add 2.8 times itself, and then add 6.5 times itself, and then add 10.7 times itself, because it's the same vector. So the transpose means that we put this as a row, so we would have 5.1, 2.8, 6.5, and so let's say that's the vector x and then we would multiply it by a vector in this direction Oops. yeah I'll put it here and that would be itself 5.1 and then we would have 2.8 And then we would have 6.5. And then we would have actually 10.7. And what we do here is we take the first element here and multiply it by this element. And then we take the second element here and multiply it by the second element, and so forth. And then we add those up. Well, because this is the same vector, we're, we're basically squaring each of the elements and then adding them. That's what x prime x is. Okay? And when we do that, we get 190.59. And again, what I could do is I could say the sum of x squared. And I get the same exact value. But notice that when, the, when I do this, I just get a number. But when I do the matrix multiplication, I get a matrix out, or it denotes it as a matrix of one and one, one, co one row, one column, okay? All right. Now, if I take the square root of um, the transpose of x times x, then I get the um, norm. So, uh, so here's the square root, and I'm back to the norm that I had of x um, up here. Okay, so the norm of x. All right.
and the norm here. So you see that that, that value. So, um, so really, the norm is the square root of the inner product of x with itself. Okay, and it doesn't have to be the it's itself. We can do an inner product with a between two vectors, but they do have to be the same uh, dimension. So they have to have the same number of elements. Okay, as each other. So the square root of x prime x, the inner product of x with itself, is the L2 norm that we calculated. All right, so in order for us to have reproducible results, for you to get the same results that I'm getting here, you need to set the seed um, and to the same seed that I'm using, 1586, if you want to get the same results uh, that I'm getting. And, and this allows me to get the same results every time. Every time I run this code, I will get this result. So, um, so here, and I show x later, but I'm going to print it out for you. So this is the x that I get. It's uh, three rows, five columns. Okay. So I want to go through how I built this again, just to give you, uh, just to help you uh, see how to build this logically. Uh, I find that students uh, see this and they think, wow, this is complicated and I don't know how to do it. So I want a matrix and I'm going to, I want to randomly select some numbers between 15 and 30. So I'm going to start with sample. Sample, um, the sample function randomly selects values uh, and, or actually, I'm going to start with a sequence. I'm sorry. I'm going to start with sequence because I want a sequence of numbers uh, between 15 and 30. And so uh, sequence is a good function to use over here. And um, this doesn't help much, but, but here this helps. So we've, got, um, so we've got from and we've got to. Now we don't have to say from and to if we put the from in the first spot and then the comma and then the to in the second spot. So that's what I'm, I've done here. Sequence 15 to 30. Now by default it's going to be um, uh, 1. Okay. So if I run this I'm going to get 15 through 30. By default it's going to be 1. But instead I want this to be pretty small, a .01. So I said I want this by, comma, by, and once I, well, it's not uh, comma, by, usually it pops up and says equal and um, 0 0.01, but it's not this time. All right, so I type in the 0 0.01, and now I get a very long, 1,501 values in this um, in this so uh, so that's a lot of numbers to choose by now what I want is I want to sample um, 15 of these so now that I've got the sequence I want to sample and so in the sample function sample it says X and then it says size and by default replace is equal to false so it will be unique so uh, I didn't change that. You could, but but not if you not for this exercise. So I'm sampling this sequence. So that's my x here, this x, and then comma, and the size I want is 15, and then that's that closes the parentheses for sample. So that gives me. So now if I want the same numbers each time, I have to run the set seed again, and then if I um, do this, you'll see that these values are the same that I had in X earlier. So you can see the first uh, five here, that's the first row, and then the next five are here, and then the last five are here, okay, the last row. So I want this by row, so I want this to be a matrix. So these are my values, and I want uh, to put this in a matrix. So um, matrix and then I open the parenthesis and I go to the end and what I want is I want um, 
by row to be true because I want these numbers, as you can see down here, I want them to go across. So as I get them, put them in the row, the first row. Okay. If you have to think about what you want, you could say um, by row equals false if you wanted to go down the column first. But to get what I uh, I usually go by row. Um, but you don't have to. Just again, it depends on what you're trying to do in the problem. Okay. But um, in this case, I want it to fill up row number one first with these values. And a lot of times that's how we create a matrix. We do, do it by row. Um, but um, that's not how the so all software does it. Okay. So you have to know the defaults of the software. Okay. So I want by row equals true. And then I want this to be a 3 by 5. So in row is equal to 3. Or you could say in column, in col, is equal to 5. Either way gives you the same thing. And so this is how um, computer science majors would write this in one code, one line. Now, I'm formally an engineer, so I like to break it up a little bit. So what I did was I said, okay, um, I've got my sequence. This, within the matrix, it's the outer function. So I'm doing this so that I can easily see when I look at this um, what's happening. I've got by row is true and in row is three. And then I would go back to here, type in um, capital X, and then hit the assign but then you need to uh, move this over. So, uh, I, so usually you do this part, the, the last, so then it lines up correctly. Okay, so that's how I built it, from the inside out, okay? So when you have a complex um, structure here, start inside first, then go to the next thing and then go to the next thing. And you can keep going as many times as you want, but that seems to make it simpler for all of us to build. Okay, so there's X, and here's the transpose of X. That's where I flip the rows and the columns. So you'll notice here that 1693, 2692, notice up here, that was the first row. Now that row has become the first column. The second row here is now the second column here. Oops, you can't see. So 1982, 1951, 1744. And then the third row is now the third column. Okay. So that's what a transpose does. Another way, uh, yeah, so that's, the, that's probably the easiest way to think of it. You take this first row, make it the first column. The second row, make it the second column. Okay. And that's where we'll stop for this video because we're about 23 minutes and I don't want to make these too long. Okay, So in this we've covered the uh, transpose of a matrix, we've covered the inner product again, and we've covered the um, L2 uh, norm or the Euclidean norm of a vector. So in the next video we'll pick up here and continue. Take care of yourself because we hope to see you next time.